Hey there, I'm Jim Richards. I want to welcome you to this week's Cyber Church. Uh, this Cyber Church ministry reaches all over the world. In fact, it goes into every nation in the world because we are serious about taking the gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. Because until we do that, Jesus can't come back. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon. You know, our end time theology is so goofy. It's so messed up. You know, uh, uh, you know first of all, we think that the tribulation is God tormenting the earth and punishing the earth because of all the sin. Well, it's not. The tribulation is actually the tribulation of the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is going to tribulate the earth, killing Christians and, and Jews and anyone who worships and acknowledges God until we take this message to the end of the earth and we with one voice, one heart, and one faith actually invite the Lord Jesus to come back at the second coming. And then we will join him and overthrow the Antichrist and all of his armies. You know what? When you look at the mess that's in the world today, I don't know about you, but I get a lot of comfort out of that. I get a lot of comfort out of knowing that, that what you're seeing happen in the world, all the corruption, the rioting, the crime, uh, the, the violence, all of that, that's not going to prevail. Now, sadly, there's going to be a lot of people that are not going to stay connected to God. They're not going to trust God. Uh, and, and, and the Bible warns that there is going to be a massive falling away. Well, <clears throat> one of the reasons there's going to be a falling away is because religion has lied to us for hundreds of years, telling us that all of these evil things that are happening in the earth, that God actually is uh, the one sending them or allowing them or using them uh, uh, as a way to punish us and get whip us into line. And so, you know, when this thing is so deadly that people are getting murdered all over the world and it will get that deadly, believe me, uh, then, then many, many believers are going to blame God because that's what religion has told them. That's what they've heard all of their lives. But I want to tell you something. There, and I understand, you know, the frustration of, of not having justice, as I said last week, is just one of the most horrible things a person can ever, can ever encounter. We, there is a part of us that needs justice. To, we need to know that we're getting treated fairly. We, we need to know that there is safety and protection for the innocent. We need to know that, there, that we have protection from the wicked and from the evil and from the violent. And I'm just going to tell you what, there is nothing that makes people uh, hide in fear. There's nothing that makes people crumble to feel like God is not being just, that he is not bringing justice to the world. Well, I just, I'm going to run down a little rabbit trail here that, that's going to help open your eyes. And of course, through this whole series, you're going to, you're going to get uh, you're going to get a greater understanding of God's justice than, than maybe you, you ever have. And don't forget, uh, you can get my book, uh, the God's Wisdom for a Fair and Just World. You can get the download for free by going right now to my website and, and, and downloading it. We also have the paperback version that you can purchase, and you can get those in bulk from the publisher if you're wanting to distribute them, because this is all about helping Christians understand in these final weeks that we have here, understanding justice from a biblical perspective, understanding how governments are supposed to work from a biblical pers uh, perspective. And then also, so we have uh, uh, this new book is re being released in an audio version at the same time, and we have a series to go along with it. So I'm wanting you to understand God's justice, and this is more than just so that you'll have the right theological information about what's going on in the world, but I am telling you there is nothing as frustrating, there is nothing that provokes anger in people more than feeling like uh, they are being treated unjustly. And I just want you to know something. All across the streets of America and all around the world, there are people that legitimately believe that they are experiencing injustice. Well, let me just say this to so make sure you understand this. Everybody experiences injustice. 
It's just a different kind of injustice. You know, uh, uh, people with a lot of money, they experience certain injustices. People with no money, uh, poor people experience injustices. Uh, you know, Christians, Jews, pagans, all, people experience injustice on some level all the time because until we are all fully transformed, uh, you, you can't have a, a completely, perfectly just world when you have people who uh, have a sin nature, when you have people that can struggle with the flesh and all, and, and all of those kinds of things. So all of this that's going on in the world, like, like I say today, is because people think that they are being treated unjustly. And when people think there is no justice, they get irrational, they go crazy and, uh, and, and start participating in things that they normally would not participate in. Now, here's one, of the, here's one of the things you have to understand about life, about what happens in the world, about how things come together. And that is everything that, that comes into our life on some level comes into our life because of choices we make. Now, the first thing people would say, you're saying it's my fault, then I've got this problem in my life. We're not talking about fault. We're just talking about the one most important law that undergirds all laws of the universe, and that is the law of the seed. And the law of the seed says when you plant a seed in your heart, and that seed is information, it can be a truth, it can be a lie, it can be deceit, it can be whatever. But when you plant that seed in your heart, when you choose to think about something, when you choose to start embracing certain thought processes, when you make it your choice to dwell on certain things, Things, you are choosing that outcome. And you say, well, no, I'm not. I'm just thinking about it. Well, the problem is the same problem that we have everywhere. We haven't read and we don't believe the Bible. We don't believe in the law of the seed. We don't believe that everything works around the law of the seed. And by the way, you know, in my, in my trilogy on the kingdom of God, uh, I will actually in a few months be releasing uh, a book on the law of the seed. And this is so incredibly important. If, if people can just master this one concept and govern their life by it, uh, almost everything in their life would change because nothing can grow in our lives unless we, not somebody else, unless we plant the seed, the seed, we nurture that seed, we think on it, we ponder on it, and it begins to grow and eventually it bears fruit and fruits are the circumstances. Fruit are the, that's the outcome of, of, of whatever we're choosing to think about, whatever we're choosing to dwell on. And so, so you have to understand the primary factor that, that proves that we are made in the likeness of God is that we have the power to make our own choices and our own choices are the determining factor of what begins to grow in our life. I'm not I, see, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that if you get into a relationship with a person that's a con artist and they steal everything from you, I'm not saying you chose a con artist, but I am saying you chose some things that began a process that took you on a journey and put you in a certain environment and certain seeds began to grow and bear fruit in your life. Well, you know, one of the one of the very first concepts that we have uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, if we want to enjoy the life of God, in other words, if we want to enjoy this quality of life where we have peace, we have joy, we have righteousness, we, you know, we're enjoying life to its fullest, we're prospering, we're walking down this path of serendipity where we're just always finding what we need. Well, if we, if we want to walk that path, then we have to become very, very deliberate about the choices that we make. And so, in a very vague sense, we are told in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, it says uh, you know, first of all, it tells us, choose who you're going to serve. And really, you're going to either serve God or you're going to serve yourself if you really, if you really want to know the truth. Those are the, two, those are the two entities that you're struggling with. It's not God and the devil. It's God and yourself. But also, uh, we are told to choose life or death. So in every situation, we are choosing life or death. And this all happens through this law of the seed. Whenever I choose, the, fir the first 
aspects. I start choosing to think about something. I start choosing to ponder on something. As I do that, my emotions begin to change. Uh, my perception of situations begin to change. Eventually, my life paradigm begins to change. Eventually, the beliefs of my heart begin to change. And at some point in time, suddenly, my life is filled with something that just started off as a thought, an unscriptural, an unbiblical thought that I considered that I was willing to entertain. Or maybe, you know, maybe it was a thought that I'm the victim. Maybe it's a thought that God's promises are not good for me. Maybe it's the, the thought that I can never have the life that I want to have in Jesus. doesn't really matter what. Anything that limits who you are in Jesus is the start of, of all your life struggles, all your downfalls, and all the pain and misery that's going to come into your life. So what we don't understand is that when we make a choice, something in us changes. Now, one of the most interesting factors in the new covenant is the grace of God. Now, I, I hate to say this to you, but there are just so much fallacy being taught against the, about the grace of God that many stable Christians have turned away from the message of grace because uh, it's, it's become a ridiculous liberal message that uh, uh, just departs from, from the new covenant. Well, well grace, uh, the Hebrew concept of grace was more about favor and gracefulness and, and, and you know, being good and, and, and that sort of thing. But in the New Testament, while that is, that is a part of the concept, the word for grace in the New Testament gets down to power, gets down to an ability, gets down to, gets down to a strength, gets down to something that's working inside you. Now, when grace goes to work in you, it goes to work in you because of the seed that you start planting. You know, um, uh, in Romans chapter 5, we, we, we have this picture of, of the pathway uh, of, of the believer, and it starts out, it says that, that uh, having been made righteous, believing that we are righteous, and more, and that gets into more than just believing, okay, um, boom, presto, you're righteous. It, it, it's, it's getting into believing that I'm not only righteous, but the power of righteousness works in me. In other words, I believe I am who God says I am. Therefore, I believe I'll live the way God says I can live. Uh, I'll choose I'll choose life. I won't choose death. So having been made righteous by faith, what does that mean? I'm, I, I'm trying to believe I'm righteous? Well, yes, but mainly you're, you're believing that Jesus himself purchased your righteousness. And when you believe in him, you are baptized into him and you begin to share in his righteousness, which is more than a position. It's a power. It's a strength. It's a capacity. It makes you able to do and to be all that God says you can do, all that God says you are. And then it says that, that when we move into that place where, okay, by righteousness, it says, it says by righteousness, we enter into peace. And when we enter into peace, then we, and by the way, the word peace in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it has to do with, um, uh, with having all your needs met, uh, with having no lack in your life. Believe, again, believing you're not just positionally who God says you are, but believing all of God's resources are, are available to you, that, that, that all that God has is yours. And so it says, it says having made righteous by faith, we have peace with God, and he says, uh, and we enter into grace by faith. And that, that grace is this power, this capacity, this strength, all that God is, all that God has, all of God's resources by faith. And that faith is in what Jesus has accomplished through his death, burial, and resurrection. So it's an interesting thing. And, and you know, one of the, one of the things that... Uh, uh, the writer of Hebrews, he, he told these Hebrew Christians, he said, listen, I cannot get you to, to a stable place because I can't teach you about righteousness because you will not learn, hear, or believe, and hold on to the foundations of the faith, the very fundamental things of faith. He says, until you get to where you hold on these foundations of faith, you're immovable from these foundations of faith, until you are completely stable in them, I can't move you on to righteousness. But you know what? We have a little hint here in Romans 5. That righteousness, again, is not just a position. Righteousness is not just a legal standing. But in fact, righteousness is a power. It is, as a matter of fact, uh, grace 
is the power of righteousness. Grace is what makes us able to live in righteousness, to be who God you know, says we are, to have what God says we have. You know, right now in our Ultimate Impact group, we're, we're talking about uh, taking control of your life. And, you know, one of the interesting questions I'll be addressing everyone with th uh, this coming week is this. Uh, are you more interested in people seeing you as a kind person or actually being a kind person? Are you more interested in people seeing you as uh, generous or actually being a generous person? You know, I, I, I find that for, for many people, the choices that they're making is I want to be seen as something rather than I want to be something. Well, see, righteousness, um, which uh, righteousness and the most basic understanding is to be in harmony with God. In other words, and it's by choice. I'm making a choice. I want to be like God. I want to have the character and the nature of God. I want to be kind. I want to be merciful. I want to be compassionate. I want to be forgiven. I want to be patient. I want to be loved. And this is who I want to be. Whether anybody sees it that way or not is not really the point. The point is this is who I want to be. Well, see, when we choose righteousness, then, then, and believe that this is ours in Jesus and believe that uh, 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 we have been raised up in righteousness with the Lord Jesus, then the power to live in righteousness works. It's, you know, I, I really need to almost to draw this out for you if you really want to know the truth. I need to draw this out a diagram because it could sound like I'm just talking in circles, but I'm really not. Because when we believe we are who God says we are, then we are harmonized with God. And when we're harmonized with God, we move into this place of peace where we know that we have access to all of the provision of God, all the resources of God. And since we know that all of these resources are available to us, and because we trust that, then we experience grace then to live in those resources, put on those resources, participate in those resources. And so everything starts with with choosing what we want and then believing the truth about how it comes to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we choose life or choose death, uh, we don't know the process. You know, we don't, we don't always know how God's going to get us to the abundant life and the current circumstance that we're in. We don't, we don't you know, and when, and when we don't choose life and by default we actually choose death, we're not choosing a bunch of bad things. We're not choosing a bunch of wickedness in our life. But the problem is whatever we choose and believe is ours and believe is who we are, Actually, a power goes to work in us and we begin to be empowered to live as that person. I, I, you know what? This, this is so crazy uh, to even try to explain this. And I, I apologize even for touching on it in just this one single message. Now, so suffice it to say, and I, I know some of you are still stuck and mad. Well, wait a minute. Uh, what do you mean I get what I choose? What do you mean everything is in my life? has to do with my choosing. It, everything in our lives is an indirect or direct consequence of choices we make. God doesn't hold that over our head. He doesn't blame us for it. He doesn't beat us up for it. But our problem is we do blame God. We make choices. You know, people make choices to become involved in business deals with unscrupulous people. And then and in the end, when, you know, when they lose all of their money, they're like, God, you should have protected me. Where were you? Well, well God was there. You just chose. You let greed or something else drive you to something. You get involved with somebody and, and just because they're attractive and even though all the red signs are there, all the red flags are going off, you know that they're being dishonest. You know they're cheating on you when you're dating, but you go ahead and marry them anyhow. And you're like, I didn't, I didn't choose this. Well, no, you, you, you really did. You chose that person. Now, the amazing thing is, even though we might not always know what is, what is the right thing in a situation, if we are committed to righteousness, we're committed to staying in harmony with God, we're committed to being like Jesus, we're committed to representing God in this earth, then the real truth is, if that's really our heart, we'll always, we'll always end up getting to the right 
situations. Now, I know you got to be sitting there saying, well, wait a minute, what has this got to do with justice? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Because God identifies himself with justice. Uh, it's probably one of the top three or four things uh, with which he identifies. Because, because God is a God of justice. And, and so God is always going to make sure or always going to provide the basis to make sure that people can always have a just and fair life and, and uh, uh, people will always know how to treat others justly and fairly uh, unless they choose something else. See, every country that is in a chaos right now, they are in that chaos because they did not choose righteousness. They did not choose justice because the leaders in those countries chose things that would make them personally wealth, wealthy, that would, would uh, accomplish their personal agendas. And, uh, and then ignorant voters who didn't take the time to, to get accurate information voted them into office. And so you just have this series of people making bad choices. And then when you have everybody stealing from everybody, you know, I, I just got to tell you, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been thinking about a, a book I want to write called License to Lie. I don't know if you know this, but a politician is given a license to lie uh, more than any person in, in, in our entire country. They can lie about anything when they're running for office and never fulfill one word. There is no, absolutely zero accountability. They can, they can go and stand on the floor of the, uh, of the Senate and of the House, and they can make up stories about what's going on about other political parties, and they have no accountability. They cannot be held accountable for that. They can go to the news media, and they can say anything they want to say about anybody in the world, and there is absolutely uh, no accountability. And then the news media can turn around and make up stories, and all they have to say is from an unidentified source, we now know blah, 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 blah. And they all know it's, it's, completely, it's completely wrong. So these people with all of that have a platform for for, uh, for region entire countries, these people have a license to lie, and they have a license to lie because as ignorant voters, we never did anything about it. We never held them accountable. We never put a stop to it, and we usually didn't put a stop to it because uh, because it, sometimes it was serving our interest, and, and I hate to say that, but that's just really the fact of it. Now, one thing that's really interesting you know, I've spent a lot of my life traveling around the world and, and reaching out into other countries, doing crusades, starting churches, working with ministers and leaders in other countries. And one of the most, one of the most saddening and sorrowful things that I used to see would be to go into some nation that at one time was in, incredibly wealthy. And they would be uh, uh, really prospering. And usually... In that nation, it wouldn't matter who it was, and it doesn't matter what the color of the people are. Usually, the ruling class, whoever they are, uh, is mistreating some other group of people. And so, starting from that choice, starting to uh, from the choice of, of having hatred or ha or justifying uh, a, a wicked, corrupt behavior, uh, they line their pockets or they do whatever they're going to do. And then at some point, the agitators come in who really have no interest in helping these people that are being oppressed. They only have interest in getting control of the resources of that country. And so before long, the, the people that are legitimately being oppressed, they're rising up screaming about oppression and injustice. And the thing is, is once they get whipped into a frenzy and once they get a bunch of agitators mixed in with them, they, they oppress more people and break more laws and bring more corruption into a city or a nation than the actual oppressors were, were bringing. You know, I see this all the time, you know, I'll, I'll see 
you know, uh, two people are having a conflict and, and, and one person is, is, is going around gossiping about what somebody did to them. You know, this person did this to me, said this about me, la da 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 and, and, the, and the thing is, from a biblical perspective, all of that slander and all that gossip would be like a hundred times worse than what that other person actually did to them. But you see, because we do not know and understand God's justice, and we do not know and understand God's righteousness, then the truth is uh, uh, we have redefined justice and fairness, not based on God's word, not based on what God says is just, not based on what God says is pure. We have redefined it based on our own subjective interpretation of what we think is unfair to us. I got news for you. You know, uh, every drug addict I know thinks that it's unfair that, uh, you know, that they don't have a house to live in. Uh, every, every person that doesn't manage their money properly thinks it's unfair that other people have more than they do. And I, just, I can just go down the list of the victim's mentality that gets bred into groups of people, and then suddenly their emotions become the basis for deciding what, what's in, unjust, or unjust rather, and and what's unfair and what is cruel and da 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 da. And so before you know it, you have a situation that is to spun totally out of control. And this is this is where we are in America. You know, um, uh, in America, our political system is so far gone. At best, we might can postpone the horrors that are going to be coming for a little while. But I don't. I don't think they're stoppable. I don't. I don't think there's any way they'll ever. They'll ever be stopped. We can make it better for a few generations if we will say, you know, so I'm. I'm going to stop saying that this is injustice. Uh, what's happening with this group of people over here? Until I see it in the Bible. I'm going to stop saying that I am been, being treated unfairly until I can see it in the Bible. I am going to stop being a God unto myself, and I'm going to stop choosing things that are, that are totally inconsistent with the Word of God, totally inconsistent with God's justice. I am going to stop demanding that uh, the world owes me anything or that anybody owes me anything, and I am going to connect with God in my heart, and I'm going to discover what it is to have a life of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then, no matter what anybody does out there, I'm going to be a just person. I'm going to be just and fair, and I'm going to treat people people justly and fairly. Listen, I just feel like I just skated over this because I'm just having to run through so much information so fast. I'll try to slow down next week. But I'll tell you, you want to understand the justice of God because you will never, never, never understand what it takes to have a fair and just society, a fair and just city, a fair and just state, a fair and just country, a fair and just workplace until you understand what God says is just. Now, here's the great thing. Once you choose God's justice, which God's justice, and we'll go into this some more next week, God's justice always starts with righteousness. Once you choose righteousness, then the grace of God works in you to be righteous, to, or to live righteous, or to walk righteously, or to, or, or to conduct yourself fairly and honest and, and in a just way. Listen, no matter what our country does, the great thing is this. We can be fair and just people and treat people right. Listen, I'll be back with you next week. And don't forget to get your free download. Check it out. It's going to change the way you think. <laughs>